All right, everyone. Hello and welcome to Friday. Hopefully you've enjoyed the first couple of videos this week and we're going to cap it off with the three attachment styles. So um, as we think about this, if you remember from Wednesday's video, the three patterns that um, I identified after the strange situation test. So we're going to match those three patterns with three distinct attachment styles. By the end of this lesson, um, you'll be able to understand and differentiate the three different attachment styles, which are based off of the strange situation research. So Ainsworth refers to Mary Ainsworth, who was a student of John Bowlby's. So we have uh, three attachment styles coming from this research that Ainsworth did. And of course, if you remember, what's really important is that uh, ability to replicate your findings. So we've seen this test um, done multiple times by different researchers, so we know that we can um, rely on these three different attachment styles. And so we have secure is the first one, anxious and ambivalent is the second one, and avoidant and fearful is the third. So I'm not going to read through this chart. What I want you to do is kind of pause and look through it, and I'll explain the top. So the first on the left side, you see the attachment style itself. The next um, part is parents were, so this talks about what their parents were like. Their level of anxiety when parent leaves is how they acted when their parent left the room. Um, did they explore the strange situation room? This says yes or no, whether once their parent left, did they continue to look around the room? Their level of self-esteem as an adult, and then their tendency to be jealous of romantic partners. So look down and see the difference between each of these styles as you go along the chart. But I wanna talk about each of them individually before, and rather than go through this chart here. So the first one we have is a secure attachment style, which is seen as, uh, you know, the, the most likely to result in happy relationships, the most likely to lead to, you know, successful, good bonding relationships. And so you're seeing a, a good supportive parent from this. I'm not going to read through all these traits. Um, instead, I'm going to talk about a popular cultural example. So we can see Hermione Granger as our example of a secure attachment style. So her parents were supportive, but not too suffocating. Um, she was confident, right? Very confident, free to express her emotions. We saw that all the time um, and willing to trust others. Um, if you read in the books, it's pretty clear that, you know, her parents trust her and were supportive, but also were concerned when she was in danger. Um, and she also has high self-esteem and trusts others and herself. So, you know, think of her as an example, if you can remember her character, of someone who fits that secure attachment style. Some of the hallmarks of it are healthy, trusting adult relationships, high standards for how they're treated, and then relationships tend to be long-term and happy. Then we have anxious and ambivalent, um, and Ron Weasley is gonna be my example. The first, some of the hallmarks you can see are inconsistent parents, parents who are sometimes loving and supportive, but also sometimes the opposite. Um, they did have some early life experiences that taught them that other people are unpredictable, which where some of that anxiety comes from, and then nagging self-doubts about whether they deserve to be loved. Okay? So if you think about Ron Weasley, you know, his parents um, were very loving, but also could at times be screaming at them through different kind of magical mediums and messages um, or being extremely distracted, which could cause them to sometimes be absent. Um, we also see that he shows this style in his love for Hermione, right, and his doubt that she'll love him back. So there's that there's that, uh, that that feeling of nervousness or uncertainty about whether he even deserves the love that he's giving her. And so he chooses often to date the safe girls who are less challenging. Um, but we also see in regards to Hermione that he can be jealous, clingy, and insecure. And then lastly, we have avoidant fearful. And so you can see this is the opposite on the spectrum of secure, um, where there's consistently unsupportive parents um, that could be absent, abusive, or cruel. Um, and then as adults, these people become isolated, loners, right? And, um, a lot of their relationships consist of one night stands. And so if we think about Harry Potter himself, you know, he had loving birth parents, but he never got a chance to know them. And the parents that um, were replaced with them, his, his uh, adoptive parents were cruel and abusive. Um, and so he often pushes people away and he doesn't believe relationships bring comfort. He prefers to do things alone, right? And in, in his relationships, he, he avoids admitting that he likes anyone. And when, it, uh, when it's obvious, he does nothing, right? And if you think of both of his major love interests, he kind of sits back and waits for them to make the first move. So in summary, 
Um, you think of secure people having healthy self-esteem and trust in others in childhood and adult romantic relationships. Um, anxious, ambivalent people have low self-esteem and high jealousy. And avoidant, fearful people have low trust in others and often avoid relationships, expecting them to end in disappointment. So I want to share, you know, some of my thoughts about it. Um, as you think about it, right, the first thing is attachment styles are dynamic through your life, I believe. Okay? And the critical thinking challenge that I've, I have for you ask you to say what you think. So I think that you can move in and out of any of these styles, that the style that you form as a kid can change through counseling, um, religious experience, personal experience, the right person come into your life and change that. Um, the impacts are not universal. So I think that everyone who has a secure attachment style is not going to show that the same. And you certainly, I believe, can be secure and still have jealousy issues or self-esteem issues. So there's parts of that that can still be um, the way you respond to relationships. And then also, um, you know, I think it's important to learn your attachment style, to identify the causes of it, and then seek help, right, if needed, because that can lead to a lifetime of positive relationships. So if you know you were set on the wrong foot in terms of um, relationships and um, bonding, right? If you had a really rough relationship with your parents, maybe that's something that you can identify and say, this is going to cause problems later. And honestly, you don't always know that it's going to cause a problem until it causes a problem. So one of the things that um, I'll have you do today, I have a little assessment that you could take to see what your attachment style is, but also just think back to your childhood and what it was like with your parents or, you know, or guardians and, and try to forecast out how that might cause some issues in your future relationships and see if you can't do some preventative measures or some curing measures to uh, counteract some of those harmful things. So today I'm going to give you um, a, an assessment that psychologists use to measure attachment styles. And then that'll be all you have for this week, aside from turning in the CTC um, on Sunday. So thank you all for uh, listening in. The next week, we'll finish off with two more um, episodes or lessons episodes like this, the TV show, two more lessons on attachment styles. And then we move into our next part of uh, intimate relationships. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I hope you've enjoyed this week's lessons. Talk to you Monday.